All right, Mason, well, congratulations. How are you feeling after a performance like that? Uh, yeah, I, I felt great. I felt like I followed the game plan and uh, got the job done. So, yeah, a performance like that, a flawless performance. So what's there not to be happy about, you know? I know you talked to me a little bit about this yesterday that you were a little concerned. I don't know if that's the right word, concerned, but about your opponent having this underdog kind of aura where he always kind of performs a little bit better as an underdog. Did, I mean, obviously that didn't happen today, but were you surprised at all by the performance from him? Um, I, I think that in order for him to have that, um, that underdog performance, uh, his opponent has to overlook him, and I didn't do that. From the very beginning, I was, I was really focused and dialed in. I wasn't just lazy and confident. I, I showed him a lot of respect, and because of that, I was able to have a good performance and, and um, show my level. But if I would have just went in there like, oh, I'm too good for this guy, da 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 da, that's when he, you know, could have potentially caught me with something. So did the fight go the way you expected it to go? Yeah, I, I think so. I definitely, I thought I was going to be able to tire him out a little bit with the hand fighting, and um, he's really explosive, and especially in the first few minutes. So that's why I was just being really cautious in the first few minutes, and then eventually I felt that he was starting to get tired from exerting so much energy, and then at that, at that point I wanted to start looking for the submission. What did you think of the new rule set? Um, good and bad. Of course, anytime you have a new rule set, um, there's always going to be some things that are confusing. Um, in, in, my, uh, in my head, there wasn't a lot of clarity on the penalty for guard pulling, um, just because at the rules meeting they said that the person could be penalized that pulled guard, or the person on top could also be penalized if they disengaged from the guard. Um, so that was a little confusing. Um, and then I, I do think that the stalling penalties were a little fast. We saw some guys getting like eight, nine, ten penalties. Um, so, you know, in jiu-jitsu, you, sometimes you have to like cook the guy and um, maybe you're trying to isolate an arm and the guy's pulling the arm back and you're trying to isolate the arm. And it's like, you know, you're working, you, we, like you are working and progressing, but it just doesn't look like much. So I think the penalties were a little excessive, but the UFC is going to learn from this. They're going to take notes. And um, I think that this rule set they come up with, uh, came up with tonight can evolve into uh, a really good rule set. Did you hear any of the commentary talking about you? I know we talked about that as well. Like, I don't know how much you could hear out there. Yeah, not um, not so much this time. I don't I don't remember exactly um, hearing certain things like I did last time, but um, maybe a little bit. Like when we were kind of smacking each other a little bit and collar tying each other, I heard a couple little things, but um, nothing really stu stood out to me this time. And, you know, we just uh, saw you do a face-off with Gordon. Um, he was in here before and had a lot of nice things to say about you. He seemed interested in, in the match. Where do you think this is going to go from here? Yeah, hopefully. Um, it just depends. I don't know if he uh, updated you guys on his injury, but um, I think that's the only factor that we're waiting on to see when he feels like he's ready to start a training camp. And then I'm sure from there it's going to be six to eight weeks, and then we'll be able to do it. I know in MMA sometimes – fighters will sit out because they don't want to risk a loss before they get that big fight. It's not quite the same in jiu-jitsu. Maybe it is. I don't know. It doesn't seem as dramatic. How long would you be willing to wait for him? Or, or is it not a factor? You can just go and compete a run. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of where my head was at even um, when he dropped out this time. That was something that we talked about, potentially waiting um, to not really risk losing that big match. Um, especially the position that I'm in now and like you know, I'm 30 years old. I feel like I'm in my prime now. But if I were to lose the shot at Gordon, who knows if I would be able to get it again, right? So it's kind of like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Um, yeah, if he's going to be ready in March or April, then I'm fine with uh, sitting out and waiting. I don't have to – you know, some guys in jiu-jitsu, they compete every weekend. I like to do a, a real eight-week training camp just because, like, I did come from MMA. So um, I like doing that full training camp and um, – yeah, we'll see. It depends really on, on when he's ready. If, if it's not going to be for like six, seven, eight months, then I might think about uh, doing another competition. But if it's going to be three or four, then I can wait. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mason. <clears throat> Why has a match between you and Gordon never never happened? I mean, it's I, I feel like it should have happened at least twice by now, but it's you guys have just always not crossed paths. Um, yeah, so in the beginning, it was mainly due to the fact that I was competing on – Submission Underground. I was the champion of Submission Underground <clears throat> on Fight Pass. He was the absolute champion of Who's Number One on Flow Grappling. And uh, I just don't think we ever could come to terms really on uh, a rule set or 
Um, I know he had mentioned that Submission Underground offered him a match um, against me on Submission Underground, and the money was less than what Flo was paying him. Um, you know, maybe Flo was offering me less than what Submission Underground was paying. So it was always, it was just little things, either on, you know, the pay or the rule set. I'm not sure every detail, um, but mostly to do with the pay and the rule set. And finally UFC came and, you know, paid both of us what we wanted, came up with the rule set that was kind of a little, a little bit more down the middle. And it was something that we were both comfortable doing. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can do it again through UFC Fight Pass. Was there anybody tonight that that impressed you if you were uh, able to watch any of the matches? Man, I didn't um, I didn't really get to see too many. I was watching uh, Victor Hugo and Big Dan. That was a great match. That Those guys both dug deep. They were both gassed. It was just a war. Two big boys that just went to war. So um, that was a fun match. But besides that, I didn't really get to see too many of them. And then finally, are you doing ADCC next year? Um, yeah, hopes, uh, hopefully. I'm, I'm in a position right now where um, I'd like to not have to do the trials, especially if I have, say, an opportunity against Gordon or like a big money super fight. Um, so I'd like to not have to do the trials. The head organizer, Mo, has uh, mentioned my name as far as um, the potential invites. So, of course, if I get invited, I'd like to compete again. Um, but I'd like to ideally not have to do the trials again. I won the trials twice, so hopefully that's enough to get me the invite for the third time. Cool. Congrats. Thank you. I know you said you were a leader. You've sort of taken the other matchup until because you wanted to keep that Gordon Ryan matchup there. Did you get some assurances when they were trying to find you a, a, another opponent that that matchup would still happen? Should you stick around and still help out this event? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just tough because how, um, how do you not – give the match to the guy that would beat me, right? It, it, it really wouldn't make sense. So, like, let's say Haizam hit some crazy flying arm bar on me tonight. It's hard to not argue that, you know, there would be more hype behind a match now with Haizam and Gordon than me and Gordon. So our sport is a little different where, you know, guys win and lose a lot more often than, say, like boxing or MMA. Um, but with that being said, yeah, I, I do think it would be tough to really push myself to – um, get the fight again if I were to take a loss. And I know we were talking a little bit earlier about the rule changes. You did well here before at the last invitation when they had the, Bravo, the Eddie Bravo overtime. You went in there tonight. And I know you said there's going to be some learning curves to tonight. Which rule set did you like better between the two? I do, um, I do really like ADCC rules and EBI rules. Um, I'm actually undefeated in the EBI rule set. But with that being said, I do understand that some people don't like the EBI rule set. And the reason why is because it gives someone that's not as good the opportunity to beat someone better than them because all they have to do is just stall and not get submitted during the regulation and then be better than them at the overtime. So I understand why a lot of people complain about the EBI rule set. Um, but with that being said, um, I do like that rule set. I, I like this rule set as well. Um, it, was a little, it was a little complicated, but I think they'll, um, I think they'll figure it out and fine tune it and then hopefully it'll be a little bit um, a little bit less confusing on the next show. And I know speaking of this show and as the show goes on, you've been involved in grappling jiu-jitsu for a long time. What are you seeing how, how much of a spotlight this is putting on the sport? Are you hearing from more people out of it that you maybe didn't hear of before that are now seeing it because of the eyeballs of the UFC and putting all this weight behind it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. At the same time, we have um, ADCC blowing up bigger than it's ever been. You know, they're going to do the next ADCC at the T-Mobile Arena. And then we have the UFC putting on grappling events. And, uh, I mean, I had people texting me screenshots that there was a picture of me in the App Store, you know. So um, between ADCC blowing up and UFC getting involved in grappling, it's a, it's a really good time to be a professional grappler. And, man, it's just going to – it's a snowball effect right now. And right now we're in the middle of it, and it's just going to keep going straight up. Awesome. Congrats on the win tonight. Thank you. Thank you guys.